Bryce, Alex, Ian, the king is back. <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, First of all, let's go. before we get into the Andrew McCutcheon talk, everybody knows Bryce. This is his third time on the show. Bryce, thanks for coming back on. Thank you for asking me to come back on, of course. And we got a new guest, good friend of mine and my brothers, Ian Porter. Ian, how are you? And thanks for coming on. I'm good. I just got back from the gym, ripped a salad, and got my energy drink. We're ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. But um, yes, the king is back. Andrew McCutcheon returns to Pittsburgh for the one year. I think is it five million, Bryce? Are you giving him? I think that sounds about right. I, 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 I'm honestly, I'm still speechless. The fact that they actually did it and they actually brought him back. I, I did not think it was possible, knowing the history about the Pirates. Old Bob. That good old Bob. The fact that they don't bring they don't bring everybody back. It's just they yes they do trade everybody away because they they're just not they're not the Yankees. They they don't they can't afford a hundred million one hundred forty million dollar contract, which is the reason why Reynolds doesn't want to be in Pittsburgh anymore. But yeah, I mean. I mean, I'll start off by saying when I found out, I was literally sleeping and my dad woke me up saying he's back. And I was like, who in the hell are you talking about? And he said McCutcheon. I was like, no way. And my phone was dead. So I had to wait like at least like 10 minutes to get back on. And then I looked at my phone. And I was like, wow, they actually brought McCutcheon back. But You don't um, charge your phone before bed? <laughs> well, one time I didn't charge my phone. But, um, but yeah. I mean, Bryce, what were your first overall thoughts when you saw they actually they actually did it and they actually brought the country back? I wasn't sure exactly because I, I forget uh, what day that was rumored that he was coming back. But I remember I woke up. I think I was just getting ready to eat breakfast and I saw that pending the physical Kutch was coming back. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But, you know, somehow, some way his, he won't pass the physical and he won't come back. And then I saw that it was confirmed he's coming back. And I was like, well, hopefully uh, – just bringing Kutch back in the Berg helps uh, helps team. Boy. Maybe more people will come to the game. It won't be an empty stadium on a Friday night for Zamboni fireworks. Hey, you know who we need? You know who we need back? AJ Burnett. Yes. AJ Burnett. Bring him back. Yes. And, uh, and all the other guys we traded away that are now all-stars like Glasnow and um, mm-hmm. name anybody. And I'm pretty sure they probably were in the Pirates at some time. And we're traded. Yeah. I, I froze there for a second, so I hope I hope I hope we caught we caught all that. But um, but yeah, so we might we might have some connection issues here. So I mean, we should be fine. But um, but yeah, I so here's the story. Apparently, we weren't that interested at first, but McCutcheon approached Bob Nutting to say, "Hey, I want to finish my career in Pittsburgh," and hey, he took them. Yeah, it's wild. He probably made a little more in Milwaukee last year, but he probably took a little bit of a pay cut. But, hey, he's loyal to the loyalty he has to take that pay cut to come back and finish his career in Pittsburgh. Is That's pretty That's pretty special. That is pretty hey, special. look at it this way. We're setting up a Cinderella story. Oh, God. Cutch is back. No, don't start. We win half the games, half of them. I will say this. That's I will say this. Right there. Mm-hmm. I will say this. I don't think they're going to lose 100 games. The roster they build up this offseason, I don't know if they're going to lose 100 games. Say Reynolds is there in 2023, I don't think they're going to lose I don't think they'll lose 100 games. I don't think they're a playoff team, but I don't know. I have a feeling they're just not going to lose 100 games this, this time around. I mean, what do you guys what do you guys think? I'm just I mean, surprised they have a sports team still. <laughs> I mean, uh Bryce, I don't know. I I talk to you about the Pirates probably the most. Do you think? How do you like? What's your what's your record prediction? I mean, it all depends on what they do, of course. You know, I mean, last year's team wasn't bad. Once Cruz came up, it seemed like they started to they were in more games than they were out of. Um, I don't know. I'll look somewhere. I'll be happy with if they lose. A little less than half the games, I wouldn't be 
too mad. Like, not like last year. I forget what the record was last year. It wasn't like, what was it? I forget now. Uh, well, th- first of all, thank God I'm back because I lost connection again. But um, I, just, I switched to my hotspot. But it, they lost like 101 games, I want to say. Yeah, I like if they, if they lose anywhere less than, less than, we'll say 87, I'd consider that a good season. Uh yeah, yeah I would I I I would say that I could I would say that especially um, when you still have all these young guys. Eighty seven seems like a a good number to try to shoot for. Don't lose more than eighty seven, which is terrible. Right. But then again, you gotta you gotta see some sort of growth. Right. All right. For some reason, it's not giving. It's it's only giving me twenty twenty three. I'm trying to uh, get the twenty twenty two standings, but um. They yes. went 62 and 100. I don't know where that was in the standings, but they went 62 and 100 in 2022. Oh, look, real quick. That was honestly that's a dis- that is a very disappointing. That was a that was a disappointing season because they should have not been close to 100 losses. It should have been like it should have they should have at least lost like 85 games. That that's with the progression, like that's what it should have been honestly. But um, besides the Nationals and the Athletics, well, actually they. Yeah, besides the Nationals and Athletics, that was the worst record in baseball. The worst was the Nats. They they went 55 and 107. Oof. Not the worst. Not the worst. Let's go Bucks. Let's go they Bucks. Won, they won 0.383% of their games. So, I mean, hey, you figure you win, you lose 82, that brings that percentage up to like what? 0. 0.45, 0. 0.46, somewhere in there? Something like that, yeah. Um, but okay. almost 500, right? But let's say this let's say for this because I looked at this projected lineup for 2023. Let's just say they didn't, they don't, they don't ship Reynolds out quite yet. If you think about the lineup with Mc, McCutcheon, will probably play left as if Reynolds is still there. Reynolds will play center, Sawinski, Jack Sawinski will most likely win the job in right. And then G-Man Choi at first, Rodolfo Castro at second, O'Neill Cruz at short, Hayes at third, Austin Hedges, which whatever, catching, and then whoever's pitching. That's not a bad lineup. And then DH and Carlos Santana, who probably still has some juice left. That's not bad. I, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but, like, honestly, guys, that's 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 not a bad lineup. No. Compared to last year. Mm. Compared to last year, last year they had they, it was, I saw the opening day lineup from last year. It was atrocious compared to this one. I recognize maybe one or two names, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, it's not a bad lineup. Now, I brought this up to Alex yet last night when we were discussing like what we were gonna talk about this. Neil Huntington, when he first, which that's a name nobody wants to hear if you're a Pirates fan, but Neil Huntington, when he was made the general manager. 2009, season sucked. 2010, it was horrible. 2011, again, horrible. 2012 was better. And then 2013, 14, 15 was his years. Look at Ben Jennington. 2020 was horrible. 2021 was pretty bad. 2022 was atrocious. And we're talking about how this next season might not be bad. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Hey, it's hey, confirmed. It's possible. Now, confirmed. honestly, it depends what they get out of what they get out of Reynolds. Like, uh oh, I don't think it's supposed to do that. No, definitely not. On a different note, did anybody see what Carlos Correa agreed to? Six years, two hundred mil, fully guaranteed. Insane. Right. Yep. And these connection issues, man. I just lost connection again. You're good. Crap. I almost dropped an F bomb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but now I'm now I'm I I'm trying to remember what I was gonna say before. You're talking I, about what they're gonna get out of Brian Reynolds. Oh, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, they do want pitching out of whoever they get for Reynolds. Mm-hmm. So I'd say if they trade him to the Rangers, so they'll probably get that Jack Lether guy, possibly Bryce. I he's, would say he's pretty good. Yeah, that's not a bad. That's not a bad return. That's not a bad return. Mm-hmm. But um, but yes. Yeah, and before we move on from the Pirates, 
I, this was the number one question I was asked by my family members. When they trade Brian Reynolds, how am I going to feel with McCutcheon back? <sighs> yeah, okay. First of all, I am wearing my Reynolds jersey, but here's the thing. With them bringing McCutcheon back, it kind of does smoothen the wound a little bit for me with the Pirates. Do, will I continue to support Reynolds wherever he goes? Yes. It's like, Ian, it's like, I remember when they, when the Penguins got, when they lost Flurry in the expansion draft, did you support, did you support him when he went to the Knights? Oh, 100%. I grabbed his jersey as soon as they went on sale. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'll do. I mean, I'll still support the Pirates, but like, wherever Reynolds goes is what I'll do. So, it's, so that's where I'm at with it, because McCutcheon... You think of, I, he was also one of my favorite players, and I was upset when they traded him away. But like, well, yeah, I, I, I'll still like the Pirates. But you still got to look at it this way, though. If they, what if they get like two rising star players out of Reynolds that can come in and help the team right away, and it helps for the better of the team? Yeah, yeah. But like the problem is on in three years, but yeah, that's the problem because baseball. Let's let's be real, guys. Baseball is broken. It is broken. That's true. It is getting to the point where everyone's going to be wanting a hundred million dollar deals, so that means the only all the same teams will will get all the good players, and it's going to be all the same teams like the Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, and the small, market, the small market teams like the Pirates. They got no chance because they can't. They're not spending one hundred forty million on a player. It's just not in the Pirates' DNA. So they just got no chance. So it's baseball is broken. But this, but the, I guess whatever formula they're using with what they got now, because you know Nutting's not going to sell the team. It, he's, he's not. So they're, they're he's going to die with that team in his name. Yeah, yeah, he he, he will, he will. Yeah. But, but yeah, so that is that for the Pirates for me. Do you guys got anything else on the Buckos? Buckos all the way. That's all I'm going to say. I am I am going to opening day against the White Sox that day. So I get to see McCutcheon's homecoming. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna. It be should be packed. Good. Like your theoretically, boy, that Benny, stadium should be packed. Your wait, boy wait, wait. Benny is a White Sox fan, though. So oh yeah, my, my brother Benny is a White Sox fan. Um, we made a joke yet saying if the if the White Sox traded for Reynolds, that's too late for me. And I kept saying nope, um, nope. <laughs> but but Bryce, what did you what did you say too? Um, uh, I said the stadium should be sold out for that homecoming. Considering what Kutch has done for the organization, it has to be sold out. Oh yeah, yeah, it it, it will, it will. But but yeah, that's what I got. The jumbotron, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be wearing my Reynolds jersey and screaming "Pay Reynolds" the whole time while I'm cheering for my Kutchin, So that'll be interesting. Make a sign and hold it up so everybody sees it. Yeah, pay Reynolds. I don't know. It's my Kutchin's homecoming. I don't know if I will, but uh, we'll do it when I go. Oh, nice, nice. Hope you go. You don't get kicked out of PNC Park. But um, oh, and before I forget, they're adding eleven million dollar renovations to PNC Park. For what? <sighs> Great spending. They'd rather spend on the ballpark, like it needs any more renovations than the players or paying it's already. Your it's already a beautiful ballpark, though. It's the I best ballpark. I, yeah, yeah. I don't it's know the, how you make it better. <laughs> it's the best ballpark in baseball it does not need any more renovations i just uh, whatever whatever all right i'm ready to talk about football what about you guys yeah sure. yes i'll ever be <laughs> yeah alex is losing his mind over here but uh do ball let's go jags let's go wow wow alex I... what well, i've been saying all year what have I been saying all year? Brandon Staley is not the guy. Let's see if I His can team mustered really. a mere 20 points. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> His team mustered a mere 20 points off of five turnovers. 20 including a chip shot field goal near the end of the first half when freaking Claybrooks got bonked on his head with the football on a punt return. I mean, all right. You know what, y'all? I got I got a stat. I got a stat, right? Mm. 
since what's the date? Let me look right here. I have it. Well, since October 28th of 2018, there have been 25 games in the regular season of the NFL where a quarterback threw four interceptions. In those 25 games, the team with that quarterback went one and 24. The one exception was the Ravens against Cleveland on November 28th, 2021, because the Browns suck. Bad. They had the, and they had torn Labrum Baker Mayfield on their team. And Lamar threw four picks and they still won like 16 to 10 because the Browns are a poverty franchise. You are winning 27 to nothing at halftime. Your win probability is 98.5%. And you run the ball seven times in the second half. Seven. Or maybe it was 12. It was one of the two. It was seven or 12. It, it, yeah, it was one of the two. It, <sighs> Alex, your, kicker, uh, your kicker misses a 40-yard field goal after he absolutely drained a 50-yarder earlier in the game. I just, I'm disgusted with this, with this organization. Right, Free the Bolts. Right. You're Fire sick. Brandon Staley. The Chargers are just not it. Brandon Staley is not it. They're so bad that they almost played themselves out of getting Sean Payton. Uh, just, Herbert played good, 25 for 43, 273, and a touchdown. Herbert's really Eckler good. had 35 yards, but he had two rushing touchdowns. Gerald Everett had 109 in the touchdown. Keenan Allen had six for 61, and Mike Williams didn't have anything because, again, the genius head coach, Brandon Staley, played them in week 18, and he got hurt. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence threw four touchdowns and four picks, 288 yards. ETN had 20 carries for 109 yards. He had a great game. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram apparently is a good tight end in the NFL. He had seven for 93 and a touchdown. Uh, all Four different receivers caught touchdowns. Kirk had eight for 78 and a touchdown. Zay Jones had eight for 74 and a touchdown. And then Marvin Jones Jr. had three for 29 and a touchdown. So mm -hmm. Asante Samuels' record-breaking three first-half interceptions was for absolutely nothing because the Chargers organization continues to be failed because the Spanos family does not know how to hire a head coach. Yep. I think we're done. I. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's crazy that they came back. I, I can't imagine what TK was feeling, Alex, after that comeback, after that, after the two games ago. But um, oh yeah, that's my other point. Trevor Lawrence went and celebrated at Waffle House, and now the Chargers are banned from every In-N-Out Burger in the state of California. <laughs> that that is funny. That is funny. Yeah, I watched the first half, and the way I saw the game was going, I turned it off. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. It's yeah, no, I, I took a nap. I took a nap. Exactly. <laughs> I saw it, and I, I took a nap, and I woke I up to the like loss. Six minutes left in the first quarter because I was coming home when it started. Mm -hmm. So I got home, and it was like 10 nothing L.A., and then I watched the rest of the game from there, and mm -hmm. I was mind-boggled. Yeah, St Brandon Staley's going to be gone. He's, 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 he's cooked. He's done. Three the bolts. Free the bolts, man. He's, he's 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 done. But uh, Ian Bryce, you got anything else to add on to the Chargers situation losing that game? We got any thoughts on it? Not on that game. The only thing that I thought was funny was from a different game. Yeah, I'm good on that. Good on that. All right, Brock Purdy, my goat, my quarterback. That's not Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Love the Next guy. Tom Brady. Next Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, hey. Maybe, maybe he could be the next Tom Brady. He could be. He's got the team around him, though. He yeah, exactly. Got the team yeah. Around him. I don't know how he would fare in like a Steelers environment. I, I, I don't know. Not well. Nah. Not with that well. Offensive line with that offensive line. Yeah. I, oof. I don't know about that, Chief. But uh, all right, Alex, what do you got on that game? God, I mean. First of all, Gino actually didn't have a horrible game. He was 25 for 35 for 253, two touchdowns, a pick, and I believe a lost fumble in the red zone. Uh, Kenneth Walker had a pretty good game, 15 for 63 and a touchdown. And DK Metcalf had a monster game. He was 10 for 136 and two touchdowns. But Brock Purdy, I mean, they started slow. They were down, what, 14 to 13, and then they were down 17, 16 at half. But 
Mm-hmm. Purdy, 18 for 30, 332, three touchdowns and not a single turnover. Christian McCaffrey, you know, 15 carries, 119, including a 68-yarder where he ran like 20-plus miles an hour. Unbelievable. And then Debo, another just unbelievable football player, six for 133 and a touchdown through the air. And uh, Brandon Ayuk had a pretty good game. He had three for 73 through the air. So big, big day for Brock Purdy. Literally played his best game of the season, and it was in his first ever playoff start as a rookie. So mm. uh, I picked the Eagles to go to the NFC Championship, but I th- or to win the NFC Championship against the 49ers. But I think it's going to be a real, real good football game, honestly. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah go yeah. for it. 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl. Hey. Hey. Never say never. I mean. I've been thinking that for a while, too, Ian. You're not the only one. I mean. I was going to say, everybody up here, I am in Erie. I have a lot of Bills friends. Mm -hmm. They're all Bills. And I'm like, I don't know, man. 49ers are looking tough on the other side. Listen, all I'm going to say is last time Mike said never say never, the Jets beat the Bills and the Lions beat the Packers in the same week. So, hey, never say never. <laughs> exactly. We'll I see. Did, I, my bold, hey, hey, I mean, I mean, I'm crazy because my bold prediction was the Jags were going to go to the AFC championship. <laughs> yeah. Right. We don't I, listen to him anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even, that's starting to look not even as crazy as it would have been two weeks ago. I'm about to, I'm about to mute, I'm about to mute my mic now because I just remembered. You want to know what my other prediction was? <laughs> Chargers winning the Super Bowl. It's okay. My brother had this same idea. And I'm like, dude, are you dumb? That's not going to work out. You know that, right? And he's if they like, had a better coach, I would say never say never. But like, Well, you said it too late, so. Yeah, I know. I said it too late. I said it too late. And Brandon Staley is going to be out of a job soon. He's probably going to join uh, Cliff Kingsbury over <laughs> where did they go? In football purgatory together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Matt Canada, Matt Canada can join them. All right. So. You know, oh, you got. Oh, yeah. You, what do you? What, is there something you want to say about? Uh, you want to do a little rant about Matt Canada? Yeah. He stinks. stinks. Get him out of here. He stinks. <laughs> you see the last play of the Vikings game? Uh, that's, oh yeah. That's the Matt Canada play. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you're not wrong. Bro. That's the Matt Canada play. Mm, we, I mean, I mean, Alex, we got a couple minutes. You want to discuss a little bit of what happened with the Vikings game at all, or? Be more than happy to take another correct pick for myself. All right, I, go ahead. Oh, we lost out. First of all, oh, no, we're good. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins played a good football game, first of all. Yep. He played a good football game. Mm-hmm. He went 31 for 39 for 273 and two touchdowns, no picks. Kirk Cousins is usually a choking quarterback. He did not make any mistakes, really. Dalvin Cook had 15 carries for 60 yards. That's not bad. But Hawkinson had a big game, 129 receiving yards. But Daniel Jones, man, 24 for 35 for 301, two touchdowns. And then he had 78 rushing yards on the ground. On top of that, Saquon had 53 and two touchdowns. Their leading receiver was Isaiah Hodgins. I don't even know who that is. I'd never heard that name in my godforsaken life. I don't even know where he – oh, he went to Oregon State and was drafted by Buffalo in the sixth round of the 2020 draft, apparently. But – Daniel Jones, first quarterback in NFL playoffs history to pass for 300, pass for two touchdowns, and rush for 70 yards in the same game. So, That's Kirk Cousins line. didn't play a bad game, but you got outballed by a dude that everyone says shouldn't have even been a first-round pick, man. I don't know. Right. Giants are Danny all the Listen, the Giants' backups played the Eagles tough in Week 18. The Eagles might have their hands full in a divisional round against the Giants. This is the third time playing each other. They all they know each other's routines. Mm-hmm. This could be an interesting divisional round in the NFC. I'm I'm not sure, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. At least one half. We know the Niners are going to blow out whoever they play in the divisional between Dallas and Tampa. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I got I got nothing else on that. Ian Bryce, you got anything else to add on to about the Giants? I mean, we knew the Vikings. The Vikings were not going to probably go out. Yeah. I mean, earlier in the year, I predicted they were going to go to the Super Bowl. But, boy, was I wrong again. 
That's what I'm saying. You don't let this guy pick your parlays. Today. <laughs> don't let this guy pick your parlays. Dude, the Vikings won 13 games and had a negative point differential. How does that happen? It's okay. Let's be real. I think it started to go downhill for the Vikings when they. I mean, they came back. They had that huge comeback against the Colts, but like. But you fell down 33 nothing to the Colts. Okay, that's what I'll I mean. tell you where it went wrong. When Kirk Cousin doesn't play at one, it's wrong. It's true. Yeah. When Kirk Cousins true. isn't playing at one o'clock, it's all just. That is true. That is true. But um. I can tell you that's true because he, that's my boy for fantasy. He did win me the league. It was a he tie. tied you the league. He tied me the league. <laughs> he tied me the league. Yeah, Alex, there, Ian and Bryce were in my fantasy league. Oh. Don't worry, oh. it wasn't Kirk Cousins that won it for me. I had CMC on my roster too with AJ Brown. So. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like, was so hosed from the beginning in that league when Dak Prescott went down and my starting quarterback was like Zach Wilson for a week. <laughs> I was uh, so hosed. Well, hey, well, at least you had a QB. B Cal was out like three weeks without one with Kyler Murray out. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Uh, no, you want to know what was a, a bad pick, Ian, from that from that whole draft from that league? Was Austin and Luke picking Mitch Trubisky for their backup QB? Oh, I know. I know. I don't even think I had a backup QB at the end of the draft. I I, I did, Mr. Pickett. Uh, <laughs> I use I used six quarterbacks in that league. Jeez. Six QBs. I had to. Dak got hurt, and then Jimmy Garoppolo only put up twenty, so that didn't work. Marcus Mariota was running a lot, so I figured, oh, maybe he'll break a hundred one game and give me like forty. That didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Then I got Jared Goff, who was either seventy points or ten. And yep. then Dak finally came back. Mm-hmm. Well, you know who I started out as QB? Tom Brady. I started mm-hmm. with Tom Brady and traded him away for Kirk Cousins and Rashad Bateman. Who'd you who'd you trade who'd you trade with? I was with Benny, wasn't it? Yeah, your brother. <laughs> but guess what? I beat him. Let's go. Let's go. He's gonna. He's not gonna watch this back because he doesn't watch this. All right. Uh, <laughs> he hates me anyway, so I don't no, care. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He might watch. He might watch this episode. He might watch this episode. But he uh, just he just texted me and told me to talk about Jared McCann when we talk about uh, NHL. But you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We got one more football game to talk about, and that is the Bills and Dolphins. So, all right, I want to start this one. Oh, all right. Ahead. Did anybody see Mike McDaniel chiefing on his vape on the sideline? Yes. Yes. Alex and I were talking about that last night. He's going like this. He looks like a college student sitting in a business class. Oh my God. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. My man was chiefing on all the bad plays and almost beat the Bills. Gosh. With their third string QB, (laughs) seventh round rookie, Skylar Thompson. Who's next in line, Gasecki? <laughs> hey, hey, Gasecki's got a mean gritty. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I say we put Benny Kosminski back there. He might throw a better ball. Well, oh, maybe. God. Maybe. Or maybe get a cramp when he's running. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Sounds like me. That, oh, yeah, just like you went into the trampoline park the uh, one time. Oh my god, I just looked at Skylar Thompson's stats for the first time. Oh boy, isn't it like, didn't he throw like 220 yards? <laughs> Wait, I gotta do the math real quick on this. What is it? That divided by. <laughs> no. Skylar Thompson went 18 for 45 for 220 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. I mean. <laughs> They're franchise quarterback, so does it really matter? I guess. How did they Why? score thirty-one points? Why did the oh, Josh Allen with them? Two picks? <laughs> oh my god, this game's disgusting. Josh Allen twenty-three for thirty-nine for three fifty-two, three touchdowns and two picks. Diggs over a hundred. Gabe Davis over a hundred and a touchdown. Khalil Shakir got in the game. I mm-hmm. forgot he was even on the Bills. Mm-hmm. He had three for fifty-one. And then Cole Beasley had Cole Beasley still in the league. Yeah, he hey. yep, came back. He had a touchdown against the Dolphins yesterday, and so did Dawson Knox. Mm-hmm. Good lord! But what it, they say, Dawson Knox is what five for five. 
in the past five games for touchdowns. Too bad you didn't do that the other that like, your parlay six next week. weeks on my fantasy bench. <laughs> no, as soon as I put him in my parlay, he's not going to do anything. He might get a Jack. yard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is this my first. I guess my first comment on this game is that Tyreek Hill will make anybody look silly. Good mm-hmm. lord, good lord. He made he made he made who was his name? Justin Poirier. Poirier? What, what's his name? Yeah, something what's like that. Name? Yeah, he made him look bad. Wow. The Bulls secondary isn't great. Is Micah Hyde gonna be back for the next for the divisional round? Does anyone uh, know? I don't. I'm not sure. Because he's been sure. out like almost all season with that neck injury, and that's why Demar Hamlin was in for him before, obviously the incident with him. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I thought I heard at one point that Micah Hyde might be back for the divisional or maybe the championship game or something like that. So we'll see. But I mean, yeah, they're a pretty inexperienced secondary for the most part. Kyir Elam hasn't really lived up to the first round hype that he you know got drafted as. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Tre'Davious White's been pretty good but hasn't quite looked the same since the torn acl last year so you know whatever mm-hmm. and then there's uh, that whole situation with the safeties jordan poyer i think is healthy and then again micah hyde's been out with a neck injury so mm-hmm. it's really been the the front seven and the linebackers and the d line holding it together for buffalo defensively here's a thought here's a here's a here's a thought poyer comes back and damar hamlin comes back and poyer plays more than hamlin mm-hmm. do the steelers go after hamlin since he's from pittsburgh Uh, pick, up, pick up Joey Porter Jr. in the draft. How about we do that? That's what I said. That was my first pick in the draft. But then again, I mean, my first pick is never changing from offensive line. Ever. I will say this. I will say this. I remember mine was like a three-way pick. Who I I thought they should go Porter, and then I said if they don't go Porter, they got to go offensive line. Get rid of DJ. Get rid of Deontay Johnson. Get a first-round pick. Um. Okay. Ian. Okay. We. Okay. You you know you know, me and Benny do not like Ben State, but I will say this, I do like Joey Porter Jr. I think he would be a great pickup for the Steelers. That's the, I, I I'm gonna be fair here. I'm gonna be fair here. So I wouldn't hate getting Por- Joey Porter Jr. But like I don't know. I feel like he really needs to stack up the offensive line. To, to, I, he won't be there unless they take him in the first round. I yeah. mean, second round, you'd be looking at like a like a Cam Smith out of South Carolina or something like that, which is still a good pick in the second round. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I think they really need to stack it up on the offensive line for sure, or at least draft one in the first round and then spend some money in free agency on it. Yeah, I wouldn't hate picking up Joey Porter Jr. in the first round, but like I don't know. I just feel like they got to focus on getting offensive line. I, yeah, I'm a homer, so that's why I'm picking Joey Porter's. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like the good old, just like with. Penn State and West Virginia fans hating the Kenny Pickett pick. I I ain't gonna be like that if they pick Joey Porter. Hey, I never hated the Kenny Pickett pick. You did not. I, you did not. I said I loved Kenny Pickett from the start. Yeah, yeah, and it's. I mean, we we we've discussed that a lot. I'm not getting into the whole Kenny Pickett stuff, but um. Got our first like six episodes of this show were us saying stop yeah. hating on Kenny Pickett, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. I mean, I got really nothing else about the Bills Dolphins game. You guys got you yeah, guys got either. I mean, the Dolphins were close. They were close. They were they were thirty four thirty one. They were real close. Now so I should have been there. <laughs> should have been there. I, I but I do have one question. If Tua was healthy and he was in that game, do the Dolphins beat the Bills? No. No. Maybe. Maybe. Bryce. I'm gonna say they get overtime and the Bills win. No, that's 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 it. That's fair. Yeah, I, that's I, I personally, I I've picked it for a while. No, I think this is the Bills' season, so I'm not really going to pick against it. But mm-hmm. I think the Dolphins could have won with two on that game. Right, right. But um, but yeah. Okay, Ian, it's time for some hacky. Now, looking at the time we got, we got we got like 25 minutes that we can talk about hockey. Whatever about hockey you want to talk about. So the floor is yours. All right. Well, what should I start with? Do you want to talk about rankings or do you want to talk about Hextall doing absolutely nothing? I mean, I, I, I mean, I could go, I could go for hearing a, hearing a rant right now. So. All right. Connor Bedard. You guys know who Connor Bedard is. Have you heard the name? Yeah. 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 I've heard the name. Yeah. I just watched hockey. That's it. 
is yeah, supposed to be the next big thing. All right. Mm-hmm. He's ripping it up in the CHL. Why are we not going after teams that are in the lower rankings like Chicago, Anaheim, Arizona, Montreal, San Jose? Mm-hmm. Contact them. Get somebody. Get somebody so they can tank and we can hopefully make it to the playoffs. Win a Stanley Cup with Sid again. Mm-hmm. He's he's old. So is yes. Gino. So is Latang. Yeah. This I team mean, isn't getting any younger. No, nah, I mean I told I told Alex this. I, Ian, I don't know if you want to agree with this. It's they're gonna be in re, they're definitely absolutely gonna be in a rebuild year when Crosby, Latang, and Malkin are gone. They're they're absolutely gonna be in a rebuild. Like it's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be like we're gonna feel like the Steelers this year, like honestly, with the with, with it being a rebuild. But, but, but yeah, I mean, when was the last time the Penguins didn't make the playoffs? Um, I mean, well, technically, technically, when they went to the bubble, they mm-hmm. didn't really make it to the playoffs. That's because right. they had to make they had to make it past Montreal and they couldn't. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. So I, I forgot about the bubble. Oh, I hate bubble hockey. I hope we never go back to that. <laughs> God. But but yeah, but what else you, what else you got about uh you got anything else about the ramp? So what we need to do, get into contact with one of those teams. Adam Henrique, get him from Anaheim maybe. Send over, I don't know, some pick maybe. Mm-hmm. Something. Max Domi from Chicago. Pick him up. Just get somebody for the bottom six our bottom six isn't doing anything nobody in our bottom six has more than 20 points that's not good no (laughs) it's not all it is not good (sighs) and also we're suffering so bad with injuries too jeff petrie's out Latang's out there i think they were both at practice today though if not Latang, Latang is joining sometime this week Mm-hmm. Jari's out. Uh, Pedersen's sick right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. We're just – we're not able to do this anymore. We can't keep losing guys, especially when our older guys are old. The, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, when we had – when we had my dad's buddy, Mike Miller, on the show, he he just – when he was at the game when they blew that lead against the Red Wings. Oh, Alex, I think I mean correct me if I'm if, if if I miss something here, but he said something on the lines of he could see he he could see the Penguins bench and they just were not they just they seemed like they didn't look like they were able to fight until yeah the- yeah no 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 yeah I remember what you're talking about yeah and Ian I don't know if you agree with that like they just don't have the fight to just continue fighting at the end of each game but it looked like that for definitely for the Red Wings game it looked like that because they blew that lead but. Yeah, I just I don't I I don't know. It's 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 tough. It's 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 I I think it's a tough year, honestly. Even even still having Latang, Crosby, and Malkin, it's I don't know, man. I just I don't know. I, mean, I I love those guys. Okay, I love the the three there. They're old though. We need to get something out of yeah. them. And also, Jason Zucker. That's the energy of the team. And he's not always there, unfortunately, because he's very, very injury prone. So that yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah. And then we have guys like Jeff Carter. Love Jeff Carter. Great guy. Doesn't always put up the points. Mm-hmm. He's a good postseason guy. Same with Kapanen. Love the guy when he's on. But when he's off, you might as well stick him on the fourth line and tell him to go fight somebody because he'll do <laughs> more than that. For real. Yeah. Well, correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pulling a Colin Coward right here, and I'm just kind of looking at the 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 scores, the box scores. But mm-hmm. it seems like the 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 play of the goalies has been really inconsistent this year as well. You know, one one game will win six to one against the Kings, and then we'll turn around and lose five straight and allow three or four goals per game in that stretch. So mm-hmm. it seems like we haven't really been able to get a consistent goalie to stay hot and to. And something I've been saying about the Pens for years personally, just again, looking at box scores is it's not very often that we have more shots on goal than the other team. And that's just not good. It's not good. It's not good enough to win games and win playoff games, especially meaningful playoff games when 
you you can't stay on the offensive when you can't put shots on goal and put pressure on the other team's goalie. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, the whole Gino being there, Latang being there, and yeah. Crosby being there. Gino, love him to death. Gino, he gives the puck away like it's free candy on Halloween. Yeah, like like you can't do that. But no, but when he's on, he'll score five goals. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> I have a hockey question for you. All right, let's I'm just see looking it. at box scores and everything. Are the Bruins that legit? I think they're a legit team. 34, like 34 wins, five losses, and 43 games played. Yeah, I think they're a legit team. I mean, I'm just looking like it says. It looks like the the Penguins are like the first team out for the Eastern Conference. Yeah, so they're in ninth right now in the conference. They're sixth in the Metropolitan. Yeah, uh, I th- they're behind the Islanders right now, and then right behind us is the Sabers. Who would have thought the Buffalo Sabers would be up there? Why are you not taking for Bedard? <laughs> I... Yeah, they're both twenty-one win teams. Pens <laughs> and the Sabers. I, I, so I, I think pen, pens are what we're one twenty-one and fifteen. Now. And then six yeah. OT losses, yeah. Yeah, we're 21, 15, and six. We have 42 games played. New, New York Islanders have 44, though, and we're only one point behind them. So yeah. maybe we sneak in at the very end because don't forget, Pittsburgh's always a hot team after the All Star break. That's true. true. Sneaky wild card team or something like that. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, yeah, ho- hopefully. But uh, it's four, four from each division and then two wild card teams. What's that? Conference. It's four from each division and two wild cards at the bottom, right? For each conference or something yeah, like that. It's it's six and then two oh, wild cards. I'm six and two sure. wild cards. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, before we move on with this NHL talk, Ian, how many Penguin games have you been to in person? In my life. In your life, yeah. Oh man, a I've been lot. to two. I've been to two. <laughs> well, we at least try to make it at least once a year. But as soon as I got to college, I got to get in on that uh, little student rush discount where you yep. get fifteen dollar tickets. Yep. Shoot down, shoot down ninety and seventy nine, and end up at the game for fifteen bucks. Can't beat hey, it. There you go. There you go. Bryce, ha- Bryce, how many games have you been to? Any games? Yeah, I went to years ago. I think it was actually the year that uh, they went to the playoff. They won the Stanley Cup. They went in 16 or no? Was it 16, 16. Yeah, they won 15 and 16 back to back. I'm pretty sure. What was uh, what year was 17? And it was to the Capitals in the. I forget. I don't know, but one of the year I went with Ross one year. It was when I was in seventh grade. So that would have been what? 15. Six years ago. Yeah, uh, really y'all are young. Six, seven <laughs> years ago. Yeah, so I went with Ross old, like, one of the old. first games of the season, and that was the year that they went to the playoffs and won the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. That's when, like, because we always we got together, me, Ross, I forget who else, but we'd watch the games. Mm-hmm. And then since they just haven't been good, I kind of, like, just looked past them. Now right. I find myself coming home and sitting down, and I'm like, oh, the pens are on. Mm-hmm. It's funny you yeah. say that. You know what's really weird? My uncle, so he owned season tickets, but he's down in North Carolina, so he can't really make it to any of them, obviously. So yeah. He tries to sell them. He's been losing money because people don't want to go to the games. Yeah. Yeah. Are they are they so used to winning that it's like, oh mm-hmm. well, we can maybe go because the tickets mm-hmm. aren't that expensive. I mean, that's kind of. It's kind of how like the Steelers were this year. I mean, we're always used to winning, and everybody expected the Steelers to go to the go to the Super Bowl and whatever, or go to the go to the playoffs in a decent spot. So, I mean, it's not just the Penguins in Pittsburgh. I mean, the Pirates. Nobody nobody cares about the Pirates, but um, but 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 yeah, that that's probably it. Is just people are just they expect the Pens. <coughs> but I, let's just say this, Ian. If that's the mindset people in Pittsburgh have. When Crosby, Malkin, and Latang are gone, it is going to be a rough road for Penguins fans that are used to winning. What was that, Alex? Rude awakening for anyone that thinks otherwise. They're not gonna, yeah, they're 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 not gonna be ready. But um, but yeah, all right, Ian, we still got 15 minutes. We're 
we can go a little less if you want to to talk about the pens but uh to talk about whatever else you want to talk about but uh yeah you're good good to go all right well also tonight it's monday january 16th ducks penguins oldest team in the league versus youngest team in the league God. How do we put up with it? Do you think we're going to win? Because Anaheim's bad. Anaheim's tanking. Yeah, Anaheim's pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, and awesome. Anaheim's pretty bad. Um, D. Smith's in that. Jari's still hurt. Oh, De Smith? Uh, I think they're going to I think they're gonna lose this one. This is a game they're going to lose, I feel like. if Third young, straight loss. Young versus, young versus old. We're used to this losing streak this season. I, I yeah. I think the Penguins will lose this one tonight. Speaking of losing streak, you want to hear a stat? Oh, boy. Carolina, this is the first time in the Mike Sullivan era that we have been swept by a divisional rival. Oh. Oof. God. God. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, Bryce, Alex. What do you what, do? You think the Pens got it tonight, or do you think what I'm what I'm thinking? And they're just young versus old. They just they're just not gonna pull it off tonight with Casey uh, Smith. I don't know. Like, yeah, I, uh, I don't know how I feel about the Smith being in there tonight. And like you said, Mike, it's kind of like we're used to this. We either streak or we skid, and there's no in between. So they're, they're we've lost tonight. the past two. You said, Ian, this will be third straight if we lose tonight. Yeah. So, unfortunately, could be another skid, but I'm going to give the Pens the benefit of the doubt against a tanking hockey team. So, I'll say the Pens win tonight. On paper, the Pens are favorites to win, and they should win. I mean, mm-hmm. they average more goals per game. The Ducks give up more goals per game. They average more shots. They're favored. Theoretically, the, the Penn should win this game by two or three goals. Yeah, I don't know. I can Detroit. see it. But but I can see Detroit. this. I can see. I'm going to make the prediction. I'm going to say the Pens win four to two. Put it in the bet slip. Right, All right. Said it must be right. All right. Hey, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll see stay. what the correct score would be on FanDuel. I mean, I'll stick with my prediction, knowing I'm on a losing streak, just so the Pens could win. So I'll, I'll stick with the Pens losing today. <laughs> The, I, the, hope, the line, I hope that you pick they lose every time. <laughs> the spread of the Pens in a one and a half goal favorite right now, minus 342 on the money line. So the bookies believe in them. I guess that means I'll believe in them. Pens to win four to two is plus, if you can read it, plus 1600. I was going to say that's quadruple digits. So that's not great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but Ian, what else you got about? about hockey you want to talk about about hockey uh let's see oh did you guys hear about my uh the paintings that i did send them in a bar stool they won. oh i did not hear that that's great yes sir that's that. the that's yes. that a ball hockey thing up in uh riverworks and they they saw one of my paintings there and they were like can you please send in something That'd be so cool. Send them in a little uh, big deal brew and uh, Pink Whitney painting. They they loved it. That's I mean, sweet. I'll put I'll, I'll put a I'll put a link in the description for your uh, Instagram account for your paintings. But here, you want to tell Alex what your account is so he can check out some of your paintings. Porter nine underscore arts. Yeah, yeah he, he he's Alex. He's a he's a fantastic painter. He actually painted me. Uh, a picture for Christmas of Sammy Guevara. It was great. It's, he posted it on Instagram. You'll be able to see it. But um, yeah, you gotta check out his paintings before before we get out of here. That's, that's hype. That's crazy. Uh, man. They, they posted it too. Yeah, they they got they said hang it in the loo. You guys <laughs> don't know. Did you get you any followers from that? that is? I got a few. I mean, oh well. It's oh, the Sammy Kavara one's sick. The Josh Allen one's dope, too. Nice, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah like, so that jo- that Josh Allen one? Yeah. Uh, that guy that's in the picture next to it ended yeah. up buying that off me, went to the Bills game, and, like, emailed the Bills before, 
and they were like, oh, can we meet up with Josh Allen, get this signed or whatever? And they didn't respond to it until after the game. They sent them signed, like, Josh Allen cards. No way. That's so I, dope. Yeah. That is crazy. And Whitney responded to your thing, too. Yeah, they follow me. That's awesome. Yeah, That's just nice. – other than other than the Sammy one, I'm trying to see which one because I'm looking at these at the paintings as well. Which one? Oh, definitely not the Penn State one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Sa- it's Saquon. It's Saquon. Uh, okay, all right. I-, I really like the Jackie Robinson. The, the Jackie Robinson one is is crazy. I- I'll I would show it up here, but if That's you want to see his paintings, you gotta you gotta look at the description. You go follow him to uh, see these see these paintings, but. Mike, yeah. I just looked, I just looked this up on baseball. No, sorry, we can get back to this. Uh, opening day tickets, the cheapest ticket you can buy, mm-hmm. is ninety dollars right now. Jeez, for the Buccos? Yep. The only thing sorry. left is pretty much uh, box seats and uh, seats behind the uh, behind the catcher. Sorry. I mean, there's, I'll come a, there's back a, a couple few... weeks later, and it'll be it'll be ten bucks. Yep. Oh yeah. For sure. <laughs> but right sure. now they're at ninety, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we got. I mean, guys, we got, we got, we got extra time. If there's anything else you want to add on to any other topics, like Bryce, if there's anything else you want to talk about, the, I mean, we did kind of get cut off a little bit because I had a bad connection issue, so I don't know how well that's gonna save. So, if there's anything else about the Pirates you want to discuss, real quick, we can. And Ian, if there's anything else about hockey you want to discuss, feel free. Yeah, but, did, did we go over the rankings? I can't. I can't remember. Did we go over rankings? Yeah, we did. We yeah, did. Ninth right. in conference, sixth in metro. Yeah, we did. Go Pens. All right, my bad. But. uh all right, Ian, is there anything else you want to talk about hockey? Or I'm good. Just hex stall, do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Bryce, there was one thing I f- we forgot to mention that I actually – that I would like to discuss too about – since you brought it up before we started was Travis Swaggerty with with this discussion you have. Now, I, he, is, he is injury prone. He, he, he is injury prone. Let's be real here. He's injury prone. A couple uh, quarters in shots, and he's fine. Yeah, right. But, I mean, Bryce, do you think if they ship Reynolds out before opening day, do you think Swaggerty gets the call to go to center? Or do you think McCutcheon will go to center and Swaggerty Swaggerty will go to left or right? I saw – I saw – because I saw that when Kutch came back, I was like, oh, let's see the potential 2023 lineup. I saw somebody had it uh, O'Neal Cruz in center. That could work. That could work. And then that guy we drafted at short – Oh, Nick Gonzalez? Yeah, the guy that plays shortstop that they drafted. I saw that, and I was kind of like, at first I was like, why would you want O'Neal Cruz in the outfield? Then I was like, okay, why wouldn't you want O'Neal Cruz in the outfield? The guy's got a cannon. He's 6'7". He's fast. He'll cover pretty much left and right himself. Right. I can see that working. The only thing is you don't want to move too much around. Mm -hmm. And he's a stud at shortstop, so who's to say you move him to the outfield and he just falls off? Hey, I, I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't I would, either. Tr- I guess try it, see in spring training, but mm-hmm. you gotta I put mean, the you gotta pit the puzzle how it fits. That's what you gotta do. If if we're winning games with the combination we have, you gotta stick to it. Now here's the thing: if Reynolds is still on the team, do you move do you move Kutch to right and maybe try O'Neill Cruz and left, or when Nick Gonzalez is ready? I'm just talking if Reynolds is here. It's I'm saying if Reynolds is here, you gotta put you gotta put Kutch in left because ninety percent of the time, when you think of like game winning uh, innings, most of the time they try to hit it to right. That's true. You you have to have Cruz in right to try to gun somebody out at the plate or at third because that's ninety percent not ninety but most of the time mm-hmm. when you see on Instagram Aaron Judge hoses them out, it's usually they hit it to right field. Right, right. And if he can keep the ball in front of him. And maybe cut down a, a short double to just a single. Mm-hmm. That'll also help us a little bit with not giving up so many runs. Right. Because right. he's so long. Right. Um, so, mm-hmm. We'll see. Like Nutting's got to sign you as the, one of the coaches, eh? I just like, I mean, I, I, you know, I played it all my life. It's just kind of like looking at it from the outside, it's easier said than done. Yeah. But... Then again, I mean, whatever I say, like last year I said that the Pirates are going to win 
we were going to lose 100 games, and they did. But that was also halfway through the season. Whenever I sat down and watched them lose a game like 23 nothing. Those games are frustrating. What was that? That's what when I said. Game? Okay, this is enough. They, I hope they don't lose 100, but I feel they're going to. And then they did. And I was like, yep, Pirates are now atrocious. What was the game they won? Was it against the Reds where they won one nothing without a single hit? Or yes. something like that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. That was worse than the time in high school when I was on the JV team for football and we legitimately won the game two to nothing. It was the fourth quarter and the long snapper snapped the ball over the punter's head out the back of the end zone and we won off that. <laughs> Literally like the same level of badness right there. God, Horrible. that was, yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, I do, I, I, I'd say I, I pay attention to the Pirates minor leagues a fair amount. They got they got some good guys down there that could that'll do well. Now, Bryce, here here's yeah. a question I have too. There seems to be a problem of because of course there is with the arbitration for G Man Choi. Now, when Andy Rodriguez is ready, do you put him at catcher or do you play him at first? Because let's be real, when we call up Andy Rodriguez, he's gonna be it's gonna be for his bat, not his glove. Looking just looking at uh G Man Choice stats right here mm-hmm. in I think this might be last year, he had 13 home runs, 53 RBIs. His average was 0.235, which isn't the greatest. But when you hear this, this is what 120 strikeouts. I mean, it's like a Pedro Alvarez all over again. Yeah. I mean, then again, Cruz struck out 148 times. Reynolds struck out 140. Cabrian Hayes struck out 120. So that's not bad. But G Man Choi also didn't play that ma- not as many games as them. He only had 383 at bats. Reynolds had almost 600. Cruz had 450, and Hayes had 500. So he didn't have nearly as many at bats as them. Right. So I, I mean, I say you see how Choi does because as we see. Mm-hmm. players do better in different positions. Like none of these guys have any pressure on them to perform because you just lost 102 games last year. Yeah. But so they shouldn't like, theoretically they shouldn't have any pressure at all. But then again, like you said, if that guy, if that guy's got a hot bat, Carlos Santana might be old. But I'm at first, see if it works. You could, you could do that. You could do that. Also, they got that Malcolm Nunez guy they got from the Jose Quintana trade that I I think he's he could be something. I saw him in Altoona last summer, and, I mean, he didn't do anything that game, but I've seen clips where he would just mash the ball to left or left center. The dude's got power. He could definitely do something with the Pirates, but, like, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, there's 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 nine positions that he – that or nine spots in the lineup that you could you could put him in. And, exactly. so, and there's a lot of other guys that will be in front of him because he's because Nunez is not an outfielder. You got to keep Brian Hayes at third. He's not going to take Hayes' spot. First, you got a lot of options. So looking just looking at it from this standpoint, mm-hmm. Pedro Alvarez or not Pedro Alvarez, uh, Prince Fielder was 400 pounds and played first base and had no problems at all. That's true. So that if Santana true. works at first, put him down there. Yeah, I, 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 it would definitely work. And hey, who knows? I mean, it, if he does, if he does well, I mean, see what you can get out of him with a trade, and maybe ship him out at the deadline. Unless exactly. if the Pirates are like, unless the Pirates are on the track of, if they're close to the postseason, I don't think they will. But if they're somewhat close, I maybe wouldn't ship him out. But definitely think about it. I think going into All Star break, this the Pirates will be third in the division. I can see that. And then after the All Star break, I see them dropping, possibly dropping to four. But I also could see them going up because I don't know how good the Brewers are going to be this year. I don't know. I mean, they they still have Burns and uh, Brandon Woodford and Yelich. Yelich is washed. I'm sorry, he's washed. Hey. That is one of my favorite players. Don't you talk about Yelich like that. <laughs> I, I think he's washed, but... You know what? You know what? Just for saying that, I'm switching sides. Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? I'm nervous. You got 30 seconds, Bryce. You better hurry up. <laughs> yeah, I got you. All right, this will be the last thing Last thing we see before we, before we head out. Wow, you got a Yelich jersey. 
Wow. Wow. And I got my red on shirt. Wow. I only got my girlfriend got it for me for Christmas because I like Christian Yelich. I think he's a good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude. He is a good dude. But uh, all right. That is all the time we have for today. And Ian, Bryce, thanks for coming on the show. Let me add one more rant, Mike. I have a rant that needs to be said in this podcast real quick. Okay. Okay. Super real fast. Quick. All right. Go ahead. All this talk about Jim Harbaugh leaving is crap. He ain't going. Oh. This is garbage. He's oh, coming back. He's not going to that Everybody cares. can write it down. He's coming back. This is garbage. I'm tired of it. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for having me on, Mikey and Alex. Have a great night. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, we are. Yes, we are back at Edinburgh, Alex and I. So maybe, maybe not. We'll be back in the studio next week. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to tune in and see. You'll have to tune in and see. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. In... Oh, paper toss, paper toss. You got paper? God, I'm not ready. Got it. Got it? We'll see you next week. Boom.